what's up YouTube, Joe again from Grot House Grotto. And most recently, within the last about a month or so, I've been really collecting a lot of Friday the 13th stuff. Um, so I've added a lot of pieces to my collection, so I figured I'd just kind of go do an overview, a overview of my collection and show you all what I picked up in the last few months. Alright, so without further ado, I'm going to go into the most recent item that I picked up. Now, in the last couple months, I've been uh, collecting masks for the first time. I've never owned any masks for the Friday the 13th uh, franchise. And so I was shopping around um, Facebook, social media, looking at these various different masks that people have, uh, people have made and people are selling. And there's one person in particular that I've watched his YouTube channel for several years now. I think probably about five years I've been following him. Uh, he does awesome movie reviews. He's a huge horror movie buff. He loves the Friday the 13th franchise, and he puts a lot of work and a lot of attention to detail in his masks. So I want to share with you all uh, two of the masks that I purchased from him. And his YouTube channel is Pizzlewell. And if you want to go to his website and check out some of his masks, you can go to Pizzlewell.com. And if you're interested in ordering any of his masks, um, just contact him on Facebook on his uh, Pizzlewell page. Or you can contact him on Pizzlewell.com. But anyways... Let me show you the first mask that I got from him. Uh, Friday the 13th Part 4 is one of my favorite masks from the movie franchise. And uh, he's got two different templates that you can order. If you want to um, purchase a mask from him, you can get this template. And then there's another template as well, which I'll share with you in the second mask. But this is more the uh, more uh, economy-friendly mask. So, But this particular um, template is a little bit more flexible. Um, it's a little bit more thinner, it's lighter, but nonetheless, it's still really good quality. So if you're on a tight budget and you want to purchase one of his masks, this is definitely the way to go, okay? And uh, so I'm going to zoom in and kind of sh uh, show you a little bit what the mask looks like. This is very, very screen accurate to Friday the 13th, the final chapter. And so I'm going to zoom in and kind of show you some of the detail he put into this. So yeah, awesome. Looks incredible. So you got a little bit of blood up there. A little bit of scuffing going on. Excellent attention to detail on that. All right, so let's check out the back. And he signs all of his masks. <clears throat> so there it is, says right there, thanks Pizzawell. And then Pizzawell.com. Now these straps are actually, uh, they're, they're film accurate. Believe it or not, this is film accurate straps. I've watched the movie, I actually just recently, recently watched it. And it's kind of got that same um, fabric. It might not be 100% screen accurate, I'm not sure. If you contact him, he'll let you know. But uh, it appears that this could be screen accurate straps. Okay? They look almost 100% identical in the movie. At least when I was watching it. But yeah, guys, this is uh, Pizzawell's Friday the 13th, the final chapter mask. I would highly recommend if you're on a very um, tight budget and you want to purchase a mask, he's, he can make you a mask from any one of the movies. Um, if, if you want to like kind of have it slightly dirtier or you want a little bit more cleaner, he can do that. Um, if you want a little bit more blood on it, he, I mean, he'll customize it for you if you just talk to him um, through his Facebook page. But yeah, uh, I got this about a month ago from him, and it's an excellent mask. You can take these little, uh, take these little straps off if you want. If you don't want to have them on there, you can take them off. You can put them back on. Um, so yeah, this was the first mask I ever purchased, and I'm very pleased with it. Uh, definitely enjoy having this mask. Alright guys, so this is the uh, cheaper template. Now I purchased another mask from him within the last week. Actually a few days ago. And I've been holding off on this mask because I'm in the middle of doing my 7 Days of Alien uh, 7 Days of Alien miniseries. So it's been kind of occupying a lot of my time. But I just want to share this all with you. Alright. So now this is the more expensive um, more expensive uh, template. Okay, it's a lot more thicker. It's a lot heavier. It's more screen accurate. Um, awesome. Oh man, this this mask is just incredible. I am so pleased with this mask. And this happens to be uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight, Jason Takes Manhattan. 
And I actually specifically requested to have the uh, more dirtier, toxic look from the end of the movie. But yeah, just incredible attention to detail. You can tell that he spends a lot of time. He, you know, he's very meticulous with it. Uh, just, you know, dirtying it up and everything. It just looks awesome. Yeah, guys, that is, this is incredible. I mean, he's got all the different scratches from the movie. Awesome, awesome work. Now, the cool thing about this mask, and I, I, I specifically requested him uh, to add this to it, um, he could have put the original straps that I showed you in the previous mask on there. I mean, he'll put those straps on there if you want. But he also has these uh, screen accurate, for this movie, right? This is a screen accurate straps. This is like a, uh, I don't know, maybe like a lambskin. It's not really quite leather, but it's, I'm not really sure what it is. Kind of like a really soft, soft leather. Let me zoom in so you all can see this. And what's really cool about these uh, screen accurate straps, there's a little bit of blood and rust on them. So let me see if I can zoom in a little bit and show you all what I'm talking about here. So actually, it's best to look at it in the corner. Let me show you all real quick what I'm talking about. See that? It's like blood and rust on there. That's how much attention to detail he's putting in these masks. I didn't even realize that until, you know, I was messing around with it one night. And I was looking, I was like, damn, he actually put the rust and the blood on the, on the metal as well. And then once again, these straps are pretty cool. So I think he even did that on the, these as well. Yeah, so he even made them look worn down. These are, yeah, this is just awesome. This mask is so incredible, guys. I can't even, I can't even tell you. And I've looked at a lot of different masks, you know, from different, uh, various different YouTubers, uh, different masks people are selling on eBay and on Facebook, different social media. And I must say, Pizzlewell's masks are incredible, okay? He loves making these things. And he puts so much time and effort into the, each one of his masks. Um, and, and like I said, he, he will customize it any way you want. So he's got two different colors of this. I can't remember what, what color paint he used on this one, but there's like a lighter, less dirtier version of it. And I actually requested to have the darker, the more yellow, um, dirtier look to it. So it kind of, kind of um, resembles the end of the movie when he's running around the sewers. And it's like, you know, he's in the toxic waste. This is the look that I really prefer with that movie is the toxic, really dirty look of the mask. And with all the hate that this film gets, Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan, actually, to me, it had the coolest mask. I just love that. God, this mask is incredible. But yeah, guys, that is my Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan, uh, toxic mask, and it's created by Pizzowell. So I'll put a link to his... Uh, his Facebook page and his um, his website in the description box. So go check it out if you're interested in purchasing this. Uh, he's just a really a really cool dude. Uh, really easy to work with. He he communicates with you. I mean, so he he'll he, he'll message you in every phase of of making this for you. So when he makes it, he'll show you pictures of it, and then he'll message you when he completes it, and he'll send you a message when um, when he ships it out. But yeah, guys, an awesome mask. I highly recommend picking this up from him. And like I said, he, he will make you any version of the mask from any one of the movies. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, so moving on. Most recently, I actually uh, was shopping around on eBay, and I was looking at some, some VHS titles. Now, everybody knows that I collect VHS tapes. Um, I really like to collect some of the more obscure titles that are just not released on DVD or Blu-ray. So I was shopping around, and you know some of this stuff pops up that you're not really searching for. But it comes up in the search in the search bar, and I ended up stumbling upon uh, the Friday the Thirteenth movies in VHS. Now, at one point in time, I actually owned these movies, and they were really beat up. And I think I sold them because they you know I had to own the DVD and I had to own the Blu-rays. So, I like I said in one of my other videos, I when I first started collecting, my my idea of collecting was completely different than it is now. I didn't really appreciate actually owning the physical media. I just kind of owned it for the movie itself, but now I actually enjoy having the physical media and I appreciate having it as like a display piece in my collection. So long story short, I ended up picking up the Friday the 13th VHS collection. I own all the different movies except for the remake in VHS. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all of them. I have 
1980s Friday the 13th, the original film. Now, these aren't in mint condition, but they are certainly in very good condition. Okay. Now, I put them in these like little pl plastic protective sleeves. So, these are pretty much just going to be display pieces. I'm not really going to watch them. I might watch one or two of them on VHS just to check them out because, it, you know, it, it really give, it gives you an, a, a good feeling of nostalgia when you watch them on the original, um, the original VHS tapes the way they were intended to be watched. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's part one. Now, these were all released in 94, so these are not the original releases. But, I mean, to me, I don't really care. Um, I'm not a 100% completionist. I don't need to have them in the earliest possible release of them. And if you were to get the uh, original VHS release, I mean, they're upwards of about $80 to $100 to get uh, the same similar quality and... Uh, yeah, you're going to be paying about $100 to get them. So the 1994 edition is pretty good. Let me just quickly zoom in on this so you all can see that. Pretty cool stuff here. I'm not going to zoom in on every single one of them, but I just want to kind of show you what the uh, VHS looks like. So that's the first one. And now I've got Friday the 13th Part 2 on VHS. This one's in a little bit better condition, not much more, um, not much of a difference. But yeah, pretty cool stuff here. I love the original cover art on these things. I wish they would, uh, I wish they would keep the original cover art consistent with all the different, uh, different formats they've released these in. I'm not a big fan of the deluxe edition cover arts. I never even picked up the deluxe editions on DVD uh, because at the time I had the Crystal Lake to Manhattan box set, which I'll get into. But I wasn't a fan of that artwork. I've always loved the classic, classic artwork on these VHS tapes. So that's part two. Now I've got Friday the 13th part three. This is obviously not in 3D. It's just the uh, standard version of it. Pretty cool stuff here. Has anyone ever noticed this? Now, maybe this is just me being really just curious about things. Okay, so here's part two and part three. Actually, they're the same. Huh. Some of you all may have noticed before, but um, the, the, the actual uh, font for Friday the 13th is actually different on some of the releases. Like, all the other movies are all the same, but Friday the 13th Part 3 on some of the releases have, has a different font. I've always been curious to why they did that. But yeah. Friday the 13th Part 3. Yes. The infamous final chapter. Now, this one, out of all the ones I picked up, was... Is in the worst condition, out of all of them. Not that big of a deal, but it looks like there's a little bit of cracking on the uh, slip for this thing. Still love the cover artwork on this. Huge fan of the final chapter. Looks like it's just really just the front cover that's kind of damaged. Pretty cool stuff. And then we got Friday the 13th Part 5. A New Beginning. I love that artwork right there. That's, that's so awesome. Never really understood why they put this uh, particular particular style of mask on there. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the actual plot of um, a pseudo Jason. Maybe they use a pseudo mask. There he is. There's Roy. Roy in all of his glory, gloriness. Looking badass. I definitely want to get the part 5 mask from Pizzlewell. I love that mask, and uh, I definitely got to add to my collection, so that might be the next one that I order from him. Just love the look of Roy's mask. Alright. Now we got Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Pretty awesome cover art there. Pretty cool stuff. I always love. I always enjoy that scene from Part Six when uh, Tommy Jarvis is out there on the boat in the middle of Crystal Lake, 
and uh, he's he's trying to return Jason to his uh, final resting place. And Jason, you know, jumps out of the water on fire. I always thought that was pretty cool. And then we got part sevens, Friday the 13th part seven, the new blood, AKA Jason versus Carrie. And then we got part eight. And I gotta say, I don't care if anybody thinks this. I love Jason Takes, Jason Takes Manhattan. I love this film, okay? And in particular, I love the poster art for this movie. That is such a cool cover art right there. I think over time, like I... Over time, this film has actually moved up on my list as far as the Friday the 13th film goes. Um... I don't know, maybe it's just nostalgia. I've seen this movie the most out of all of them because this was the film that when I was a kid when I got introduced to the Friday 13 franchise, this was the one that I've seen the most. So I just kind of have a, uh, a fondness for this movie. And there's that awesome mask. He actually, Pizzawell can actually, uh, he actually uh, made one of these masks. And so I think he's still kind of perfecting it at this point. But uh, yeah, I've always really enjoyed that mask and the cover art on this. Pretty cool stuff. And the infamous Jason Goes to Hell. I actually kind of like this this cover. Um, I don't enjoy that. I don't like the slug. The whole concept of the slug was kind of ridiculous. And I don't like the fact that Jason's only in the movie for like 15 minutes. But I do quite enjoy this cover art on this. I like the flames in the background. I always thought that was pretty cool. It's a damn shame that, you know, yeah, it's just a damn shame that, you know, uh, Cunningham comes back to make this movie after making the first one. And this film is like an abomination, okay? I mean, I enjoy it as its own slasher film. It's got a lot of good slasher elements, but as it ties in with the rest of the franchise, it was probably the weakest entry in my opinion. But, I mean, I still enjoy it for what it is. I, I probably watched this one the least out of all of them, though. And then, Jason X, Jason in Space. Evil gets an upgrade. Wait a minute. Okay, so you got the old school Jason look on this side. It's pretty cool. And then you got upgraded Jason on the side. Uber Jason. Pretty cool stuff here. All right. I don't really continue. I don't really consider this part of the uh, Friday the Thirteenth franchise. Yeah, I, I see it as kind of like a standalone film. It's kind of, it's just a hybrid film that uh, stars Freddy Krueger and Jason in it. But as part of the the mythology, it kind of it doesn't fit in. I'm all about continuity, and this film doesn't really fit into uh, the continuity of, of the other films. I do enjoy it. Um, I do enjoy. I love uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street films, and I love. Friday the 13th, so I mean, I enjoy watching this film, and uh, it's definitely cool to see Jason Voorhees and uh, Freddy Krueger battling it out, but uh, I thought I'd share that. Now, I didn't put this in a um, case yet, because I, I kind of ran out of them, so it doesn't have a protective sleeve on it, and it's actually one of the most worn boxes out of all of them, but yeah, there's old Freddy and Jason. There's that. 
And that is all the VHS tapes that I own for Friday the 13th. Let's go ahead and dive into uh, my DVD collection. So, I actually just recently picked this up from uh, from Walmart. It was in the uh, DVD bin for like three bucks. And it's kind of silly that I own all these different versions of these films. But I figured, hell, wow, three dollars. And if I'm wanting wa if I'm wanting to watch Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X in the same night, it's on one disc, so I can just pop it in. And I have to uh, swap out discs. That's pretty cool. But yeah, it's the bare bone release of both films. Check out the back real quick. Nothing to it, just the movie itself, and it is actually the R-rated version of Jason Goes to Hell, unfortunately. And so, I used to own the actual box that the uh, Jason uh, uh, Crystal Lake to Manhattan box set that they came in. So now, since I was an idiot back then, I end up uh, throwing out the box because I really didn't uh, appreciate um, digital media back then. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, physical media. So here are the, uh, let me move this out of the way so I don't drop my drink. And I'm actually drinking uh, some Smirnoff watermelon mixed with some Sierra Mist. It's good stuff. So there is the uh, Crystal Lake to Manhattan box set, what, what's left of it at least. So back in the day, I always I thought it was a good idea to conserve space to like basically take them out of the boxes, take them out of the cases, and throw them in these little folio things. I don't know why I did that, but yeah. So I threw away the box. I'm an idiot. Now I've got them. I still have the DVDs, but I don't have them in the box. But nonetheless, pretty cool. And there are the other films there. So you got the uh, the bonus disc right there. Jason Goes to Hell, Jason X, Friday vs. Jason. What else do I got here? Some other random movies in my collection. Hmm. The other disc to that, Friday 13th, The Killer Cut, 2009 remake. But yeah, guys, that is what's left of my Crystal Lake to Manhattan box set. And then, since I had had the uh, Paramount 8, I went out and got the Cinema, Cinemax 3 films. So I ended up getting the, uh, this is like a little DVD box set. It's got Jason Goes to Hell, Jason X, and Freddy vs. Jason all in their own little individual cases. So I thought it was pretty cool to add to my uh, to my Paramount Films box set, so that way I could have all films. And then, at some point, the uh, deluxe editions of these movies came out. I didn't really feel the need to go out and buy those. I didn't like the cover art. Um, you know, that bonus disc that came with uh, Crystal Lake to Manhattan, the box set, had pretty much all the same special features on it. So yeah, I didn't really feel like the need, I, uh, I didn't feel the need to go out and get those. But what I did do is when Paramount started to release the Friday films on Blu-ray, I ended up picking up the, uh, the first three on Blu-ray. So I've got Friday the 13th, the uncut version, Friday the 13th Part 2, and Friday the 13th Part 3 on Blu-ray. And I was really just waiting around like everybody else, you know, patiently waiting for them to release all the other films on Blu-ray, and they just never did it. So I don't know what was going on with that. Maybe they just thought these were the three strongest films. They probably didn't think they could make enough money on the individual releases of those films. So yeah, this is all we got on Blu-ray for the longest time. So I had the, the box set and these. And then, a couple years ago, Warner Brothers ended up getting the rights to the Friday the 13th franchise, and they released a complete collection on steel, on, in this uh, steel case, on Blu-ray. Okay? This is the definitive Friday the 13th complete collection. It's got all the Paramount 8, the first 8 films from Paramount, and then the New Line Cinema movies that came in the franchise. So let's go ahead and pop that up, open. So, comes with a little book. 
I'm not gonna take it all out because you all have seen it, but it's come, it comes with this little like digi book. It's got the um, the Blu-rays fit into these little uh, cardboard sleeves inside, and then it comes with like a little mini uh, mini version of the Crystal Lake uh, Memories book. It's kind of like a shorter version of the actual book, and then it comes out with it comes with these um, two 3D glasses, and then a Can Crystal Lake patch, and then this cool little uh, wristband that comes with it as well. Then you got Willa Ford. They had to throw her in there for some reason. Pretty cool all around, all around set. I do enjoy it. I hope they do a more definitive box set in the future. Um, maybe have each film on its own disc. It would be kind of cool. Give us the uh, the uncut version of, of Jace Goes to Hell. Um, yeah. I don't mind the steel case on it. It's a pretty collectible little case. But, um, I really enjoy the release they did for Friday the 13th. I'm sorry, for Halloween. Um, so some of, some of you all have probably seen that before. It's a big box. It's got, you know, each film in its own black case. That is the definitive way. If you're going to release a box set for a major franchise like Friday the 13th, they need to, to, to take note. Warner Brothers should have looked at uh, how Halloween was released by Scream Factory and uh, Anchor Bay. That was an awesome release. This could have been so much better. I don't hate it, but I think it could have been a lot better. And then, last but not least, I have the Friday the 13th Complete Series on DVD. Uh, now, for all who are wondering, this does not follow the storyline of the Friday the 13th films. It is Friday the 13th in name only, okay? This was a little mini series, a little TV mini series that they were doing in the kind of like the late 80s. I think they started it maybe around part six or part seven. So when between Jason Lives and uh, um, the New Blood, they started to release this mini series on TV. So at that point in time, um, the films weren't making as much money in the movie theaters. So to kind of supplement and make a little bit more money on the franchise, they started to. Uh, put this out on TV. It's a pretty cool little miniseries. If you've all seen um, Tales from the Dark Side or Tales from the Crypt, it's the same premises. Um, every episode is kind of like its own little individual story. They kind of, they're kind of reminiscent of anthology film. Uh, so I'll just pop this open and let you check it out. So it comes in this really hard plastic box and then you open it up Comes with a little book that explains all the different stuff that you can order from uh, for this particular company that released this. And then there's just several discs that these are on. So it's all the different seasons. And I think there was four seasons in total. And it's kind of a... It doesn't even pop in. Look, this thing just, just sits in there like that. It's kind of a really cheap design for the box, but it doesn't even snap into it. It just kind of sits in there like that. But yeah, that is the complete series of Friday the 13th. Um, I'm about halfway through watching this. These are very, very poor quality, okay? So these, even though they're on DVD, I would say the quality is not much better than VHS, to be honest with you. This isn't even DVD quality. It's uh, it's full frame, so it's a little box in the center of your TV, so you don't get to see it on a, on a complete widescreen image. It's just a little full screen image in the center of your screen, so you get that, which is kind of annoying. And then it's pretty much uh, VHS, almost almost DVD quality. Okay, some of the some of the episodes are, are DVD quality, and some of the earlier ones are like VHS VHS quality. This was actually released by, I think CBS actually released this. Let me check out the box. Yeah, this is a C CBS DVD, okay? So, it's owned by Paramount, but CBS, re uh, CBS released it. So, they didn't put any effort into this release at all. I would hope in the future that we would get a... At least a DVD quality, if not Blu-ray quality of this. Because this is a damn shame. This is a really good show. These these episodes are awesome. I really do enjoy it. Um, 
you know, I, I wasn't old enough to watch this series when it came out. I was probably only four or five. And by the time I was old enough to really get into these films and get into the, uh, to actually start watching this, it was, you know, long discontinued. It wasn't on TV anymore. So I didn't start watching these, uh, this series until probably about three or four years ago. I, I, I purchased this. And uh, pretty cool box set, though. I enjoy it. All right, guys. So that is my entire Friday the 13th collection. Um, like I said, I do own po posters for every single one of the movies in the franchise. I own several t-shirts. Um, I'm not going to take those out and show you all because I've already reviewed them in my previous video. But yeah, I just kind of want to share with you all some of my most recent things that I purchased and kind of give a quick overview of my entire collection. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And as a reminder, I am still continuing my 100 subscriber giveaway. So when I reach 100 subscribers, I'm giving away four movies, okay? I'm giving away Prometheus on 4K. I'm giving away The Lost Boys on Blu-ray. I'm giving away The Shallows on Blu-ray. And I'm giving away the Scream Factory Collector's Edition of Misery. And all four of these films are all sealed. Factory sealed. Never been opened, okay? So the rules of this giveaway are you got to basically be a subscriber to my channel. Um, you have to comment on one of my videos from when I made that original video until the 100, 100 subscriber giveaway. Once I hit 100 subscribers, you got to comment on one of those videos. Um, let me know what your favorite beer is and what your favorite movie is, okay? And don't forget to hit the thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. Once I hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to take all the names of all the people that did those three things and I'm going to put it into a random name generator. And the first person it gives me, I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to contact them. And I'm going to expedite this package to them. Okay? Anyways, guys, until next time, take it easy.